shouldn't sin. I am not sin, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mexican brothers getting shot in their own driveway in front of their kids. All of these are the beginning of sorrow, right? We believe these things. We come out here every week to show our faith. Did we come out here to talk to you? Did we come out here to talk to you? Did we come out here to talk to you? No, we came out here to talk to our people. We came out here to spread love to Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Same people, your people. First and foremost, I want to say call hello Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, we are Sakari Phoenix, I'm Officer Ayat Don, here with Soldier Yatazar. And today, we're going to talk about the righteous mark, or, or, or the seal of God, right? And what that is, and how you obtain that. So we're going to start off in Ezekiel chapter 9. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 1. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, cause, cause them to have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. So what's going on here is, is, is the city is engaged in all manner of wickedness, all kinds of idolatry, and even the temple has been polluted. So death is called for at this point right so all these uh, these people got to come with the destroying weapon in their hand read okay. and behold six men came from the way of the of, of the higher gate which lieth toward the north and every man a, a slaughter weapon in his hand and one man among them was clothed with with linen with a writer's ink, ink, ink horn by his side Right, so these six men come through with their slaughtering weapons. One man among them, dressed in linen, has a writer's ink horn, right? So he's got he's got that ink. Read. And they went in and stood beside the, the brazen altar. And the glory of of and the glory of, of the God of Israel was gone up from the from the cherub whereupon he was. To the threshold of the house, and he came, and and he, and he called to the man clothed with linen. So the glory of the Most High had had shown had been shown to these men by the altar and by the cherub, right? And he called unto the man in the linen, the one with the ink horn, read, okay. which had the which had the writer's ink horn by his side. Read on. And Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So Yahweh told this man to take your inkhorn and set a mark upon the men that sigh and cry for the abominations in this place, right? So we look at the word mark here in this in this chapter in the Hebrew to H eighty four twenty. It's Tav. It's literally the letter known as Tav. Or in the in the Lashwan Kodash, the Paleo Hebrew, we know it as the letter Tha, right? It looks similar to an X. And it means a uh, mark, a mark as a sign of exemption from judgment, right? So read on. Come. Verse 5. And to the others he said, my. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have have ye pity. So he said, go through this city and kill. Don't have no pity on anybody. Don't spare anybody. Have no sympathy for anybody. You're going forth to kill. Read. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. So no ma it doesn't matter if they're little girls, little boys. If they're old, if they're young, if they're women, kill them with no pity. Read. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. So don't kill any man that has the mark. Kill everybody else. Read. And begin at the sanctuary 
then they began at the at, at the ancient men it's like it they, then they began at the ancient men which were before the house so so they they picked the point where they were going to start the man with the inkhorn went in first set the marks the men with the weapons went forth killing everybody that didn't have that mark now we're going to go to the new testament going up to uh, the book of john chapter 6 and we'll start at uh, verse 27 John chapter 6 verse 27 labor not for the, for the meat which perisheth right so don't don't work don't worry about working for meat that perishes right for bread that withers away read but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the son of man shall give unto you for him hath hath God the father sealed now hold it right there right so we're supposed to labor after that bread that doesn't perish, right? That gives everlasting life that we get from Yahweh Shai, who's known as the Son of Man. It said, for him hath the have God the Father sealed. Yahweh put a seal on him. So let's look at that word here in the Greek for seal. That's uh, Strong's G4971. It says, to set a seal upon, mark with the seal, to seal, right? Going down, it says, in order to mark a person or a thing, in order to prove, confirm, or attest a thing. So this is literally the same concept. It's the same idea. We're just reading it in the Greek now, right? So we're going to see the word sealed a lot, but it's literally the same thing as what we read before as far as the mark was concerned. Being a righteous mark. Read on. Verse 28, then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work, work the works of God? So he just told them, don't labor for, 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 you know, bread and wine and all this other stuff that perishes. Work for the, for the bread of life. They said, how do we work the work of God? How do we do the work of God? Right? Read. Yeah, how much I answered and said unto them, this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. So it is the work of God that we believe on him who he hath sent. Yahweh sent Yahweh Shai. So here's the thing. Don't let anybody tell you that it's simply enough to say, I believe in Jesus Christ, right? And then that's it. Right. To believe on him who was sent, whose real name in the Hebrew is Hamashiach Yehoshah. We have to believe in what he did. We have to believe in what he said. Right? So let's go to Matthew 19 and 16 and read 17. It's the book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 16 and behold one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? All right, so this is basically the same question that was asked before. What's the work that I'm supposed to do? What shall I do that I can get this eternal life? Read. And he said unto him, Why, why callest thou me good? Mm -hmm. There is none good but one, that is God. So he corrects him. First of all, don't even call me good. Only Yahweh is good. But, read on. But if thou wilt, uh, if but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. So what he said to do was to keep the commandments. So when somebody asks, "How do you enter into eternal life?" and the answer being, "You believe on him who was sent. You believe on Mashiach Yahweh Shai, or as he's called in you know, in English today, people will say Jesus Christ." That's true. But you also have to believe in the message that he came with, as well as the actions that he carried out. And the message he came with was keep the commandments, right? So if you're not keeping the commandments, you are disqualifying yourself from getting that holy mark or from getting that seal of the Most High God, right? Now, go to John, book of John, chapter 6 and verse 30. Because it's also important that we, we recognize and understand mission right 
So read from third. We'll go down to fourth. Book of John chapter six verse thirty. They said therefore unto him, What sign shows thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from, from heaven to eat. So they're asking him, Look, what what's your sign? What's your miracle that you're doing for us that we that we may see something? Because Moses, he called down bread from heaven that we could eat. What 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 are you gonna do? Read? Yeah. Then Yahweh said unto them, Verily, verily I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. He said, Look, Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven. Read? But my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Right. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth and giveth life unto the world. You see that? So he said, look, Moses didn't give you that bread from heaven. The Father is given that true bread from heaven that gives life unto the world. Read. Okay. Then said they unto him, Lord, more, Lord, even more give us this bread. They said, look, let us get some of this bread. Go ahead. And Yahweh shall said unto them, I am the bread of life. He said, bro, they said, let us get some of this bread. No, you don't understand. I am this bread. Read. Okay. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He said, look, you come into this, you enter into this thing, you'll never want for anything. You're not going to hunger, you're not going to thirst. Read. But I, said, but I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. Shall, sorry, sorry. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will, I will in no wise cast out. He said, "Look, you guys have seen me and don't even believe, but everybody that that, that is brought to me, it, it was sent by Yahweh. So everybody that the Father sends to him, he's saying he's not going to cast out, because it's not up to you. It's the Father that calls. This is a, this is a thing, according to election." Right, read. For I came down from heaven, and to do mine own, uh, and and sorry. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will. He said, I didn't come to do my own will. Read, <clears throat> sorry. But the will of him that sent me. But the will of him that sent me. So again, don't let anybody tell you that the Son of God is replacing the Father in any in any way, shape, or form. He came with a message. The message was. The words of the Father. All right? He didn't come to do his own will, but the will of the Most High God, Yahweh. Read. Verse 39. And this, is, and this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should rise it up again at the last day. So, that, so he's not going to lose any of these people that sent to him. Because even those that die are going to be risen back up in the last day. All right. Give me a uh, First Thessalonians four and sixteen. It's First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen. Sixteen. Sixteen. Verse sixteen. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With a voice of, of the archangel. So Yahusha is coming back down from heaven when he returns. Read. Okay. And with, with the voice of, of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. See, these are the people that are going to be risen back up. These are the people that are not lost. We might think they're gone. We see them die, but they're not gone. They're coming back. Read. Then, then, we, which, then, sorry, then we which are alive... And remain shall be caught caught up together with them in the clouds mm -hmm. to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So those that are living that are sealed to have this mark, and those that had it and then died are all gonna come back unto Yahweh Shai together at the same time. Go to Revelation seven, start at three. Revelation chapter 7 verse 3 right. saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads till we have what 
uh, sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So again, this seal, this mark, is sealed in the forehead. The same way we read about it before, the same way as talking about the elect of the elect here in Revelation 7. All right? They're going to have that holy mark. They're going to have that seal of God. Read on. Down to verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they and, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So it's going to be a hundred and forty-four thousand men, twelve thousand from the tribes of Israel, right? The twelve tribes of Israel. Read on. And then of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Nephtali were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Joseph were, were sealed 12,000. Now hold on, it's worth noting right here that it says Joseph. Manasseh was already mentioned. Right. You know anything about the children of Jacob and his grandchildren, you know Joseph was his child. Manasseh and Ephraim were Joseph's children, right? So when it says Manasseh 12,000 and Joseph 12,000, that Joseph is indicative of Ephraim, all right? So don't get bugged out when you read this and you don't see Ephraim's name in there. Ephraim is part of this. It's just named, labeled as Joseph right here. Read on. Of the tribe of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Mm -hmm. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all the nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and 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 some and palms in their hands. All right, now hold that right there, right? Um, I want you to go to Second Ezra two and thirty six, and while you're getting that, I'm going to read the definition for that word kindreds right there. So that's Strong's G five four four three. Fule, a tribe in the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. All right. So I know a lot of, you know, sometimes people read that and they think, oh, this means it's everybody. Well, it literally just told you from Judah, 12,000, from this tribe, this tribe, this tribe, 10,000, went all the way down, then said that. That's not giving it to everybody else. The usage in the New Testament is for a descendant of one of the 12 tribes of Jacob, all right, of Israel. Now go ahead and read that. Uh, you said Second Edges 2 and 36. 2 and 36, we're gonna go down to 4. Okay. This is the book of Second Edges, chapter 2, verse 36. All right. Sorry. Flee the shadow of this world. So flee the shadow of this world. Get away from the darkness of this world, all right, read. Receive the, joy, the joyfulness of your glory I testify my Savior openly. So the glory is for us, and we are to testify of our Savior openly. We're not supposed to be ashamed of Hamashiach Yahweh Read. Oh, receive the, the gift that is given you, and be glad, giving thanks unto him that hath called you to the heavenly kingdom. You see that? We have to give thanks to him that led us to this heavenly kingdom. And just like Yahweh I said earlier, the work of the Most High is to believe on him who was sent. So don't get it twisted. When we go out and we do our preaching in the streets, we are doing the work of the Most High because we're listening to what Yahweh Shai said. Yahweh Shai said, go out there and feed the flock, all right? But don't think for a second, for even one second, that if you are, if you are against Yahweh Shai in any way, if you are so-called OT only or non-messianic or part of something else where you believe in some other Jesus that you're doing the work of the Most High God, you're not. You'd be working for somebody else, okay? We have to testify openly our Savior. Read. Verse 38. 
Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of Yahweh. So we have to behold the number of them that be sealed. We just read that in Revelation. It's 144,000. Read. Which are departed from the shadow of the world. Which are what? Departed from the shadow of the world. So they're not, they're not in the midst of all this wickedness. They've departed from the shadow of the world. They are, they are keeping the commandments, as Yahweh Shai also stated, as being the work of the Most High God. Read. And have received glorious garments of Yahweh. And received glorious garments of Yahweh, dressed in white. Right? Read. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine, uh, of thine that are clothed in white. Which, which have fulfilled the law of Yahweh. You see that? They have fulfilled the law of Yahweh. Now we're going to go back to, back to that right there. We're going to go to 2 Timothy 2 and 19. But like it said in 2 Ezra, clothed in white. And again, that verse 9, uh, Revelation 7 and 9, Stated, after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindred and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. This is talking about the same thing. These people that got this righteous mark, this seal of God. All right? Read. This book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal of of Having the, seal. Just, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every let everyone that nameth the name of Hamashiach depart from iniquity. So let everybody that named the name of Hamashiach depart from iniquity. What is iniquity? It's sin. It's the opposite of keeping the law. Those that work iniquity, we're not supposed to be doing that. So if you want this mark, you have to depart from that. Proclaim the name of Hamashiach Yahweh Believe on Yahweh and everything he's told us, right? Give me uh, 1 Peter 2 and 21. It's the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Hamashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Leaving for us an example, read. That ye should follow his steps. That ye should follow his steps. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, well, he did that, but we can't do that because he's, you know, special. He's this, he's that. He could do that because of whatever, but it's just for us to sit back and just believe that he did it. No, read that again. First right. uh, uh, Peter 20, uh, 2 and 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Hamashiach also suffered for us, mm -hmm. leaving us an example. You were called to follow his example. Read that we should follow his steps. Read on. Who did no sin, neither was guile, fi guile found in his mouth. He did no sin, and no guile was found in his mouth. Right. Matter of fact, real quick, go get me the definition of sin. Oh, okay. okay. First John three and four. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. That's right. For sin is the transgression of the law. So he himself did not transgress the law. In him was found no sin. So it is up to us to keep this law just like he did. All right? Give me 1 John 2 and 6. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so, walk, so to walk even as he walked. So if we claim to abide in him, if we want that righteous mark, that seal of the Most High God, then we have to walk the way Hamashiach Yahweh walked. Because he was sent here to be an example for us, to die for us, and to bring us into this kingdom that was promised for us. So with that, Shalom. Sakari.